we believe that this is where we emerged. And this is what we call the center of the universe. Grand Canyon is, is one of the most sacred places in the universe as far as the Hopis is concerned. This is very important to us. We don't want to destroy this. I know somebody mentioned it yesterday, you're trying to play God. Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't think we are able to do that because we're human, we're mortal beings. I know some of you are very, very bright and smart and, you know, but I don't think it can go beyond that. Well, on behalf of Air Star Helicopters and myself, I'd like to welcome you to the Grand King. Bienvenue à bord de l'hélicoptère d'Air Star, tour spectaculaire du Grand Canyon. The Little Colorado River flows down through there. The Colorado River flows down the canyon up to our left front. They come together right in front of us at a place called the Confluence. To the Hopi, the confluence of the Colorado and the Little Colorado marks the place where humans first emerged from the Earth ages ago. Grand Canyon is, I guess, nine million years old. If you take a ballpoint pen and just draw a line, across a piece of paper. That's the amount of erosion that it took every year for nine million years to make the Grand Canyon. On the very day Glen Canyon began to fill, the Bureau announced plans for more power dams on the Colorado, including one in Marble Canyon, not far from the confluence. The Marble Canyon Dam uh, was a wonderful dam site. Uh, sheer canyon walls over a thousand feet, straight up and down, as, as near perpendicular as you could get in a very narrow canyon, so it was a perfect dam site. Well, Marble Gorge is a, a, a remarkable slot, and the Colorado River is trenched and trenched itself very deep in their very steep walls. There are places where the, the river has polished that marble gloriously. Uh, you have entered and are well into the Red Wall Limestone Formation, a place they finally decided to build the so-called Marble Dam. And they had a big operation there. A regular community was uh, formed in the vicinity. They had a, uh, uh, an aerial tramway that came down from the canyon rim. They had to test the rock, and in order to do that, they dug tunnels into it. Uh, so they began testing the cliffs there, the rock for its strength. These new dams would flood 140 miles of canyon between Hoover and Glen. They were the centerpiece of an immense plan to generate more power for growing cities. Having lost Glen Canyon and realizing how great a loss that was for all time, I, I just had a new determination, well, let's not do it this anymore, and certainly not the Grand Canyon. So we began to do what we could to, to block the attempts of the Bureau of Reclamation to build the two Grand Canyon dams. Now, a big smile. The Grand Canyon is so deep that tourists on the rim cannot see the river. Brower testified before Congress that the dams would be wasteful and impractical. This his big question is, well, wouldn't you compromise? Wouldn't you take just a little teeny weeny dam in the Grand Canyon? And I said, no, the Grand Canyon wasn't wanting to trade off. Permanent, massive things that would have altered it forever. So we had to stop it, and it wasn't easy. They didn't want any dams built any place on the Colorado River. It's not hard for me to understand that. Senator Goldwater represented the interests of Arizona voters. I don't like to see these dams built. I wish there were some way we didn't have to build them. But speaking for people who are mounting by the millions, and I expect to live to see the day when my city will be the fifth or sixth largest in America, I have to argue for these people. Commissioner Dominey pointed out that reservoirs would not be seen from any vista point on the canyon rim, and that Marble Canyon filled with water would be more accessible to tourists than powerboats. Should we flood the Sistine Chapel so tourists can get closer to the ceiling? Now, you know, that was in response uh, to the members of Congress from Arizona and all who said, uh, we will make a beautiful lake there so people can see the scenery better. So we ran ads in the New York Times, the Chronicle, the Los Angeles Times, the Sacramento Bee. We read, ran ads all over the Washington Post, wherever we thought it would work. Americans got tired of the idea that dams were conservation. The engineer's argument that you can't waste this water, you can't let it flow to the sea unused, had just began to pale on, on the public. So it was not that hard to say, well, let's 
consider that we have enough dams for now and let's see if we can't keep some rivers alive. The dams would rise like bookends on either side of Grand Canyon National Park, technically outside the park boundary, but Brower argued they would still affect the Grand Canyon. I resent the fact that uh, Dave Brower deliberately mis misled the public about Bridge Canyon Dam. Floyd Dominey has still to this day figured that uh, all I did was tell untruths about what was going to happen to the Grand Canyon. And uh, he gave the, del the impression deliberately that we were going to flood the Grand Canyon National Park. There was actual tourists would say, where would the lake be in this view? We used the Bureau of Reclamation's photographs of how much would be inundated. It was an absolute lie, and, and Brower knew it. So that sanctimonious bastard deliberately lied. We talked about damming the Grand Canyon. That changed everything. The Grand Canyon. The Reader's Digest said it was a bad idea. My Weekly Reader said it was a bad idea. Terrible idea. And the beast was out of the bottle. I have no apologies. I was a crusader for the development of water. I was the messiah. I was the evangelist that went out and, and argued persuasively uh, to develop our rivers and, and, and water supplies for the benefit of people. I don't apologize for that. As public opinion swelled, Commissioner Dominey held out for at least one dam. We came very close to building that structure. The site was selected. The general feasibility studies were prepared. That dam was uh, nearly a reality. I think the story goes that once uh, Floyd Dominey went uh, overseas on in an, an inspection, and it wasn't until he left the country that uh, people then immediately huddled and, and came to agreement um, not to include those structures in the, in the final legislation. Uh, the dams were taken out of the authorization bill. He had to be gone for that to happen. That was such a historic moment. Nobody knew it at the time, but that really it was the beginning, and it was a big beginning of the end of the age of dams. We've just come into what's called the Marble Canyon Dam Site area, and in the uh, late 50s, early 60s, this area was actually proposed uh, for a dam, and this was one of the dam sites that was, uh, was being explored. There's added tunnels on both river right and river left, and that's primarily where you see the mine tailings. On river right, you can see a couple of uh, Bureau Reclamation graffiti signs. The one that's straight across from us is, is B. The middle of the dam was to be located. Uh, living River is a very exciting thing. It should remain an exciting thing. The river has done a very good job in the Grand Canyon. It's made a beautiful canyon, and I'm not ready to penalize the river to please a couple of hydroelectric engineers, ever. Brower had won. Glen Canyon was the last dam built on the Colorado. But saving Marble Canyon did not stop the flood of people drawn to new homes and new jobs in Arizona. In 1969, Lyndon Johnson authorized the Central Arizona Project. For the millions of Americans west of the Continental Divide, it'll provide more water for growing cities. It'll provide more water for expanding industries, for the farmers' crops, and for the ranchers' cattle. It'll let us build aqueducts and power plants and a network of projects for irrigation, for community water supplies, for flood control, for electricity, and finally for recreation. So by taking this action today, that we are making the waters of the West a little sweeter, and we'll make the grass of the West a good deal greener. This is the most expensive waterworks in Bureau history. The lifeline without which jobs, farms, and homes in central Arizona could not exist. Glen Canyon Power and a giant coal-fired power plant drive pumps which lift the Colorado 300 miles uphill into Phoenix, Tucson, and Scottsdale. Phoenix has grown so large that Paris, Rome, and Manhattan together could all fit within its city limits. 